an OER. I'm going to share. A video. Everyone seeing the video? I'm going to play yes. it. Yeah. Hi, I'm Christine Guzman, Associate Professor at Federal University of Pernambuco, USD. And in the last 10 years, I studied and work with technology-mediated learning. Sustainability and the 2030 Agenda are primarily concerned with promoting lifelong learning in the face of global actions to support the fight against COVID-19, many initiatives were created, products and process developed and under development. It is no different in Brazil, as well as at the UFPE. In this light, classification of research projects according to the SDGs aims to present an initial analysis of a set of research projects and adherence to groups of SDGs in topics of interest to global health to support the development of an, an open educational resource repository, readme. Since 2016, I started to study and practice open education and quickly became interested in open education resources. Through the SABE research group, I was able to develop projects that supported the development of UFP digital educational ecosystem. Things like tools and methodology that better integrated teachers and learners. This year, UFPE created a spread, Secretariat of Open and Digital Education Programs, where I work as coordinator of open education research projects. A little about who and where we are. Brazil is an extensive country of great cultural diversity. UFPE is located in Recife, a coastal city in northeastern Brazil. We have more than 35,000 students in face-to-face -face courses and about 350,000 students in online and blended courses. How can we gather SDGs grouped by the main areas of interest in global health? This proposal deals with the idea to create an open educational resources repository in view of the great development of academic scientific materials and products to face COVID-19. The use of OER is a worldwide trend extremely reinforced by the content's current experience. Positive impact related to the creation of an institutional OER, especially with information about COVID-19, is the visibility of the scientific and academic reference of great value nationally and internationally. There is no one size fits all when it comes to devising solutions to start an OER initiative. It is important to understand the needs, including as a way of encouraging open educational practices. Nowadays, digital curation involves maintaining, preserving, and adding value to digital research data throughout its life cycle. Therefore, the active management of research data reduces threats to its long-term value and mitigates the risk of digital obsolescence. Meanwhile, objects safeguarded in trusted digital repositories can be shared among the broader research community. UFPE financing an accredited project to develop prevention and copy action against COVID-19. Altogether, 94 projects were founded, but for this project, we only analyzed 77. Aware of the great development of academic scientific materials and projects to face COVID-19, we designed and implemented 
an open education resource repository developed for academic improvement, ReadMeet. Partnership is the key. Working on real world problems usually requires the combination of different kinds of specialized and contents dependent knowledge, as well as different ways of knowing. Here are our partners. Sabir, research group that supports students and professional trainings in different areas of work and has an important role, the production of digital educational resources and educational content. Spread, recently created institutional cell that serves that readme community in support of the necessary regulations, monitoring the records of educational resources and in use of authorization and assignment terms. Athena, institutional repository at UFPE, received the readme community. ICDE OER Advocacy Committee, this partner was essential, helped us with UNESCO OER recommendations. Aware of the wealth of ongoing investigations, all methodological actions were planned with the integrated strategy of four phases. C. We listed all finds and draw the preliminary view of the model to be developed. Understand. We evolved concepts and gather the scientific academic expectation collected in a survey. Refine. The first edition of Readme repository. Readme. The repository itself implemented. It was created as a community in the institutional repository at UFP. The parameters that integrated the Readme Open Access policy is based on the Brazilian copyright law to guarantee that the educational resources of Readme can be disseminated and reused freely by anyone, whether in educational activities for self-learning or used in the daily practice of professionals in specific areas provided. Concerned about guaranteeing the requirements for a sustainable OER model, considering giving the restrictions imposed on education by COVID-19 and the resulting digital transformation, it is important and urgent to look at progress towards the SDG4. It is necessary to consider new low-cost approaches to teaching and learning as a way to generate a more equitable and current impact. The first categorization covers projects associated with different themes and integrate strategic actions cataloged in four main groups. Diagnosis and identification of the virus. We analyzed 22 projects. Health public policies. We analyzed 30 projects. Economics and society. We analyzed 11 projects and creative industry with 14 projects analyzed. The idea was to group, according to the many areas of interest of global health, the sustainable development goals based on their targets. The grouping was possible after a survey with all project coordinators involved. The results also helped to define the document types implemented in README. As all projects are related to health and education, SDGs 3 and 4 are present in all groups, as well as SDG 6, 9, 11, 12, and 17. Once they are concerned with health, innovation, community sustainability issues, responsible consumption and productions, mailing of garbage, and partnerships involved in studies. In the second categorization, a set of actions and an integrated strategy were carried out to understand and catalog 77 projects and adhere them to the four SDG groups on topics of interest to global health. The first group was T, 
Challenges and Resilience for Global Health. We cataloged 18 projects. The second, Digital Information and Communication Technology Applied to Health Education. We catalog 18 projects. The third, Entrepreneurship and Technological Innovation in Health. We catalog 10 projects. And the last one, Health Communication, Develop and Sustainability. We catalog 31 projects. One difficult encountered was ensuring that, that each project could only be in one of the groups. After this achievement, the search model in the developed OER community was defined. Finally, during the process of including an educational resource in the repository, questions directed the best group to be used. This is the page of Athena Institutional Repository. We can see the README community, the only one ready to receive open educational resources. I would like to thank Federal University of Pernambuco for the financial support. Thank the README team and partners for the hard work developed in four months. I dedicated this project to all teachers and students who seek and evolve knowledge. Congratulations. And for OEG 2020, my gratitude for the opportunity and the pleasure of participating in such a rich and interesting conference. Glad to share this experience. Thank you. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I, I guess it's better to resume our work. I, I'd like to, to make two key points that it's very important for us during the, this project and after that. The first one is about the, the survey. They, they, it, it brought us a very important information about our teachers and about our researchers. About 80% of them know nothing about OER. So it's, very, uh, it's a, a very huge task to do <laughs> with them to, to promote orientations and disseminate the concepts. And the second one is related to the hesitance that, that it be in the Brazilian at all in the uh, education institution about OER and about innovation. Uh, for example, we, we have um, very, very large difficulty to implement uh, such activity uh, learning methodology, as example. So uh, after that, I, I will be very glad to re receive questions or considerations. I'm more than happy to answer and listening. And thank you again to the OEG 2020. I guess we, we have time. We have time for questions. If so. We do have time. If you have a question for Christine, please feel free to turn on your microphone and video if you choose, um, or you can ask your question in the chat. Christine, one of the questions that I had was, um, have you worked with Nova Escola at all? I, I, I read a, a little about it, but, but never worked with it. No. Okay. If you okay. have if, if you have any hints, just, just, just tell. <laughs> <laughs> I do. So Open Ed Global has had several conversations with them um, and supporting their work. Uh, right now, it looks like they are, um, they're offering free resources to everyone across Brazil, but they are trying to get to the point where they can offer open resources. So, um, but they are creating content for K-12 and training teachers on what that, um, how to use that in their online classrooms right now. 
but they're also starting to talk about OER and what that is. So it could be a good match um, to build awareness of OER. Oh, yes. Great to know, Anna. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Christina. Thank of you. course. Any other questions for our presenter, Christine? Oh, sure. Um, I have a quick question. Uh, uh, Christine, I'm, I'm, I'm also from Brazil. Um, so um, I guess my question would be, um, why, why is there so much resistance, especially like in the public um, education system? to something like OER? Oh, the good question, Nelson. Uh, we, we're trying to figure it out just because if it is open projects, it's so good uh, and it's, it's so so spread uh, everywhere, why not to use it? Yeah. Why so difficult? In our institution, we related it to the age. Most of our teachers and, <laughs> and professors are um, more than 50 years old. So it's very difficult to them to change the habits about the classrooms, mm -hmm. to do a new classroom. So it's mm -hmm. very difficult. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a generational resistance to, yeah, um, on the side of, yeah, the teachers. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I think this is true about like, even, even here at Stanford with some of the, um, with the professors too, who are, you know, they do things their way and that's kind of how it works, you know? <laughs> yeah. Most of our teachers, especially in the, in the engineering courses, don't use technology to, to present the contents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's crazy. And it's, it's, it's too bad, you know, I'm, yeah, especially in Brazil, because, you know, I'm aware, I'm, I also, I did my master's at a public university in Brazil several years ago and, yeah, you, it just makes no sense to me and like why the resistance, you know. Um, you know I think we could say that yeah. for many countries, yeah. right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that's, no, but uh, totally, you know, it's one of the, the things that like we're like working with Dave, you know, when uh, we, he has this incredible resource and you're not kind of passing on the cost to the students, right? That's, that's huge. It's hugely important. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm tired of like, even like when I teach Portuguese here at Stanford, like I, the, it costs like 150 bucks to import the books, you know, uh, you know, for the students. I mean, you know, so yeah, Stanford has a specific demographic and most of the students happen to be able to afford the books, you know, but there are also many students who are not, you know, um, and that is a problem. Um, but anyway, it just seems like a such a good idea, you know, the like OER resources, and it just seems like the perfect idea in so many ways. So, yeah. Yes. Anyway. Also, not only the teachers, but the technicians, the students know nothing mm -hmm. about OER. In my subject, I just just implemented the concepts of OER and SDGs for all my students. Mm -hmm. That, that's amazing. Well, uh, Christine, um, I'm, I, I will. I'll get in touch with you. Uh, um, we we should continue the, the conversation um, you, via email. Um, let me just. Uh, can, can you just type your, your email in the in the chat box real quick so I can. I, I missed the slide. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And as you're doing that, Christine, we're going to start to transition to our next presenter, which will be Monica. Thank you so much, Christine, for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Thank you. Hi, 